ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ವಿನೋದಕಾರಿ ಪಲ್ಲಪನ ವಿಸರೆ ನಹಿ ಜೋ ವಿಸಾರಿ ಜುಗಲ ಚರಣ ಸೋಳ ಚಿನ್ನ ಜೇಹ ನಜರ ಸಮೀಪೇರ ಹೋ ಅಮಾರಿ ಏಹ ನಜರ ಸಮೀಪೇರ ಹೋ ಅಮಾರಿ ಏಹ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ನಿಜ ಹರಿಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ನಿಜ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಭಗವಾನ್ ನಿಜ ಠಾಕುರ್ ಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ನಿಜ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಮೈರಿ ಆರ್ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ಠಾಕುರ್ ಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ದ ಫ್ಯಾಥ್ ಮೇಕರ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ಲಿಬರೇಷನ್ ಆರ್ ಅಟ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಡಿಯರ್ ಪೂಜೆ ಗುರುಜಿ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಸಂತೋ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ವಿ ಬುಕ್ ತೋಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ in the vachanamru has talked about many many topics that can lead one to attain atyantik kalyan or as we call it ultimate liberation many many topics many many subjects but there are certain you can say topics or subjects that are completely distinguished from the others that bhagwan swami narayan puts great weight and emphasis on <clears throat> there is topics of removing swabhavs like anger ego jealousy so on and so forth there is topics regarding the greatness of god there is topics regarding the greatness of the satpurush there is topics regarding taking refuge of god and there is topics regarding bhakti of god out of these topics and many more one of the most important topics that bhagwan swami narayan narrates in his vachanamrut is of bhakti or as we call it devotion devotion is something that is of you can say the purest and highest caliber and that very thing bhagwan accepts if one had all the money in the world and one gave it to god without any devotion bhagwan would not accept it but if one gave one penny to bhagwan with devotion meaning emotion and bow you can say a a kind of uh, affection or love then god would accept it as all the money in the world even if it was just one penny that's how rare and powerful bhakti or devotion is and that's why today we would like to talk and listen and learn about bhakti the types of bhakti how to do bhakti the benefits of bhakti and overall the emphasis of the importance and glory of keeping bhakti for bhagwan here in this wallet paper as you can see you have the darshan of first and foremost thakur ji maharaj who is there in puja bhaj guru ji's puja there and you have pura gansha maharaj and puja guru ji is doing mansi puja and performing devotion or bhakti to thakur ji maharaj it says hey maharaj please give me your devotion we can ask for many many things to bhagwan we can ask for nice things in this world we can ask for things beyond this world we can ask for many things that are not in our hands but the best and ultimate thing to ask for is bhakti or devotion because bhagwan becomes bound or you can say anchored by a devotee who has such kind of bhakti or devotion this is bhagwan's statement and this is the only element that attracts lures in and locks bhagwan into our heart everything else is there as a support dharma gnan and vairagya according to the vachanamrut vartha third chapter are there as support but the ultimate thing to do is perform the bhakti of bhagwan 
And we would like to take a look at the Satpurush, his life in Bhakti for Bhagwan, our Puja Guruji. Charitras regarding Bhakti and devotion of Nan Santo and devotees, so that we can actually get an, a perspective and an insight how Bhakti should be. So let's move on. An outline overview is what is Bhakti, types of Bhakti, Bhakti strength, benefits, how to perform Bhakti, results of Bhakti, and how to develop Bhakti. So without further ado, let's begin. What is the meaning of Bhakti? Serving God with affection or doing anything while remembering God. Now, there is many people that come to Mandir that do many things. Vacuum the floors, mop the stage, do, uh, you can say decorate for uh, festivals, set up chairs, do many audio, video, mixing, seva. There's many things. And that all is connected with Bhagwan in some way, somehow, because it is part of the temple. But serving God with affection or doing anything while remembering God is bhakti. Serving God with affection. That's very important because bhakti is something that can be done. But if there is no affection, suppose I do 500 maras a day, but if you don't have love for Bhagwan, then there, it is pointless. But if you have love for Bhagwan and perform one mara, Bhagwan likes it a lot. And the second half of the meaning is samarpan or surrendership. Something that our soul is bound to do in this life or the next life or whenever is to surrender oneself to Bhagwan. Ultimately, each and every soul will reach Bhagwan at one point or another. But this element is very important and bhakti is a statement which is connected with samarpan or surrendership. If one has bhakti, then one is able to surrender everything to Bhagwan. May it be swabhaus, may it be wealth, may it be property, may it be luxuries, may it be jewelry, may it be so on and so forth. We can say that Dada Khachar, in a Kantik Muktaraj of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, had this very feature in his life. And due to that, Bhagwan stayed in his Darbar Gad. As Nilkanvarni, when he was traveling all around India, there was many, many offers of kingdoms and many, many offers of properties and status and credit and luxuries and women and everything. Yet, Bhagwan Swami Narayan denied, Nilkanvarni denied and rejected everything and kept his fundamental roots. And when he came to Gujarat, and when he met Dada Khachar, after becoming Sajanan Swami, seeing the Samarpan and devotion and Bhakti of Dada Khachar, Bhagwan Swami Narayan stayed in his small kingdom, we can call it, which is not at, at large at all, not even compared to a big mansion or a bungalow, but a very simple courtyard and a couple of houses, we can say. Yet Bhagwan stayed there not only for one or two years, but 29 years out of his 49 years on this earth due to one element, which was the bhakti of Dada Khachar, Jiluva, Laruba, or we can say the Samarpan of them. So this is a very important factor to learn for all of us. Now types of bhakti. A is Ishta Bhakti, which is of nine types. And B is Guru Bhakti. There's two types of devotion. One is completely dedicating to God, dedicated to God. And the second type of bhakti is dedicated to one's guru or spiritual master, which is just as important because in order to perform ishta bhakti, one needs to first perform guru bhakti. 
when one performs Guru Bhakti, one actually becomes eligible to perform Ishta Bhakti because one's Guru teaches one the pure way of doing, doing devotion and the pure way of truly making Bhagwan happy. When one's Guru teaches one's, one this whole, you can say, factor, then only does Bhagwan accept his devotion and from there he also accepts even the smallest of devotion. That's how important Guru Bhakti is. But we would like to learn about both in this, you can say, presentation. So first and foremost, there are nine types of bhakti and we would like to first go over them. Number one is listening to katha. Listening to katha is a very, very important and very, very dedicated factor uh, in order to uh, get closer to Bhagwan. It is said that Bhagwan comes in to the ears of God or the ears of a person and it comes inside of one's, you can say, rade or one's heart. Bhakti is many, there are nine types of bhakti, but the most important for a sadhak or the most important for a person to get to is listening to katha. Number two is singing. Singing is another type of bhakti that our nansantos performed and gave us many, many hymns. Maybe over 50 or 60,000 pads, kirtans, are written by such kind of sadgurus like Premanand Swami, Nishkuran Swami, Muktanand Swami, or Adi, Adi Guru, Devanand Swami, so on and, Brahmanand Swami, so on and so forth. They wrote all those buds or all these kirtans so we can perform the bhakti of God by singing kirtans. Number three, remembering Bhagwan. Remembering meaning through, you can say, japs, through mara, or just while walking, talking, remembering Bhagwan inside of one's heart. That is a type of bhakti that is very important. Number four, serving Lord's lotus feet. Bhagwan Swami Narayan. His uniqueness is that it's said in the Vajrayana that he does not like even the weight of a handkerchief. That's how much Bhagwan is non attached to this whole world. But due to accepting the bhakti or devotion of his devotees, he takes this service of getting served, uh, you know, just like this, Bad Sevanam. And from there, those bhaktos attain happiness. And that's how Bhagwan gives his happiness. Number five is deity worship or archanam. We do abhishek's, we can do archa of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. We can do many things. And this kind of bhakti is very, very, you can say, fun and exciting to do. Every year here, um, in the anniversary of our Mandir and Pyura Gansham Maharaj, we perform Abhishek, which is a form of Archanam Bhakti. And Bhagwan becomes very, very happy due to this bhakti. And I would like to show you a clip of Puja Guruji performing Abhishek of our Valida Gansham Maharaj in Loedam, India, and see the bhakti of our Puja Guruji. From there, we can reflect that we should also possess such kind of bhakti. <laughs> Tapa, 
You can see the different kinds of colors and even by just remembering a glimpse of Bhagwan with such kind of, uh, you know, colors, one can attain happiness you know, as well. and well. And even at the, at the time of one's last breath, if one remembers such kind of, uh, you can say, bhakti, then one attains akshadam as well. Moving on, six, bowing down or vandanam bhakti. We can say we do dhanvats uh, to Bhagwan Swami Narayan and is a kantik satpurush and that is a form of bhakti uh, which can be uh, done any time and we perform it like this that is the way seven is servitude or dasyam serving Bhagwan in any way form we can say here uh, due to uh, the grace of our puja guruji he has set up this seva of Piragansham Maharaj in such a way, Thakurji Maharaj in such a way, that santos are always engaged throughout the day in serving Bhagwan by serving Thar, by uh, performing Abhishek, by changing Vaga, by uh, doing many, many different things. And due to that, two things happen. One stays engaged in the bhakti of Bhagwan, and one earns the Rajipo of Bhagwan. Number eight, behaving as a friend of Bhagwan, Sakyam Bhakti. You know, there is that charitra of Gopi Baniya Giridhari. As we know, Bhagwan at Apuragan Shamaraj at times, Thakurji Maharaj at times, wears uh, a sari uniform uh, with hair, and through that whole, you can say, uh, dress and everything, Bhagwan uh, actually, it was a prasang that Bhagwan did this in disguise to. Uh, to uh, please his uh, bhaktos, you can see over there, uh, Brahmanan Swami and Surakachar. And this is a form of bhakti that Bhagwan likes. Moving on. Complete surrendership or atma, atma nivedanam. Completely surrendering oneself to Bhagwan is something which is ultimate bhakti and something that one will need to do in this life or the life beyond. May we one do it today, may one do it in a couple of days, may one do it in a couple of years, but this is a very, very important factor that is needed in order to please God. And when one attain, when and when one gives one's Atma to Bhagwan, what else has one left to give? Bhagwan doesn't need our money. Bhagwan doesn't need our foods. Bhagwan doesn't need our, you can say, luxuries. Bhagwan does not need anything. Bhagwan just needs one thing, and that is our pure devotion, or you can say our atma. And that is something that Bhagwan wants from us. So as you can even say, an example of atma nivedanam bhakti or complete surrendership is santos. Santos have given up their life for Bhagwan are doing everything which pleases Bhagwan, And that number nine type of bhakti that we're looking at, we can see in Santo's life pure. So these are the nine types of bhakti. And finally, as we mentioned in the beginning, there's two types of bhakti. One is Ishta bhakti, which is God related. And the second one is Guru bhakti, which is related to our spiritual master. You know, on the path of uh, spirituality, without a guru or without a spiritual master, it is unable, one is unable to reach akshadam or even attain God. If one has a guru, then, and if that guru is ekantik and if he is a true guru, then he is able to take that atma to akshadam. Example. There's many subjects in school, like math, science, history, social studies, language arts, gym, so on and so forth. Now, if we take an example that your math teacher comes and starts to teach gym, 
You think that's going to go well? No, right? That's going to be tough. Suppose your gym teacher comes and starts to teach language arts. You think he's going to make any sense? No. Suppose that your science teacher comes and starts to teach gym and running. Is that going to make sense? No. In the same way, if, you're, if we have a guru or if we have a spiritual master in attaining Bhagwan, then we will be able to attain Bhagwan. But if your chemistry teacher came or if your math teacher came and started to teach you how to perform nine types of bhakti, you think you'll be able to learn that? No chance. In the same way, Guru Bhakti is something which is needed in order to attain Ishta Bhakti or Bhakti of Bhagwan. If one cannot, if one does not have a Guru, according to the Vachnamrut, according to one's experience, I'm going to say that it will be a very, very tough way to attain God, especially for those who want to reach Akshradham and reach Bhagwan. But if one has a spiritual master and follows as he says, then one will be able to attain Bhagwan easily. So that's the main or importance of Guru Bhakti. And we can see here Nilkandvarni, examples given Muktanan Swami, Eklavya, and Arpuja Guruji. These are prime and beautiful examples of Guru Bhakti. Nilkandvarni to Ramanan Swami. Nilkandvarni did not meet Ramanan Swami. At first, he met Muktanan Swami, but a letter was sent to Raman, uh, A letter was sent to Nilkan Verni when he came to lodge, and he in the letter by Ramanan Swami, and Ramanan Swami said that if you want to stay in this satsang, you will have to embrace a pillar. And for nine months, Nilkan Verni, being Bhagwan, stayed in the commands of our Adi Guru Muktanan Swami, and did exactly what he said. All because of his Guru Bhakti for Ramanan Swami. That's how important it is. Number two, Muktanan Swami. Muktanan Swami, when he became confused that this Sajanan Swami is showing Samadhi, he cannot this is not good, this is not this is not the right way. He should actually be helping others reach Bhagwan through another method. But he became so confused, he went into the forest and started to cry. And there, light, 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 and Raman and Swami came. Raman and Swami had already went to Akshardham. Raman and Swami came and said that, Muktanan, why are you crying? And Muktanan and Swami said that this Sajan and Swami is performing Samadhi to everyone. He is just new in Satsang. He's only 21 years old. How could he perform Samadhi like this? Then Ramanan Swami explained, Remember Muktanan, I told you that I'm just a mere drum beater. The real actor is this Nilkan Verni or Sajanan Swami. He is the Supreme Lord. And believing Ramanan Swami and understanding this was just an act. Muktanan Swami is an Anadi Mukt, was an Anadi Mukt, and will always be an Anadi Mukt. But an act on this earth, believing that, oh yes, Ramanan Swami, yes. That is true. He completely surrendered to Sajan and Swami. So that was Guru Bhakti. Eklavya giving his thumb to Dronacharya, making a doll and, and learning the art of archery from the voice of his Guru. That was Guru Bhakti and Arpuja Guruji. Arpuja Guruji is a prime factor because we see him today even till this day, it's been 38 years since the passing of our Dada Guruji, yet Guruji does not make a single decision or forget Dada Guruji for even a single day. That's how much Guru Bhakti he has and that, due to that Guru Bhakti, Guruji is very, very happy and has a lot of Rajipo of many, many Santos in the Sampraday. As we can see a picture there. Moving on. Okay, any action which is performed with bow or emotion for God is automatically transferred to bhakti. Now suppose you 
नाइन भगत सपोज यू स्पिन फाइव हंड्रेड मारास बट यूर थिंकिंग अबाउट गेम्स इन प्लेइंग आउटसाइड इन यूर फ्रेंड्स थेम एन ऑल दैम देन डू यू थिंक भगवान वो एक्सेप्ट यूर भक्ति Why not? You spend five hundred maras. It's a lot of maras. What about if you only do one mara, but you remember Bhagwan? You look into Bhagwan's eyes. You remember each and every form, and then you do that mara. You think Bhagwan will like that? Yes. In the same way, let's take a look at some examples in real life that you'll like. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I know your favorite food is not pizza, but it's an orange. Wow. Okay. <laughs> But I have an example of pizza here. Now, pizza can be made it can be made from outside restaurants. It can be made at your house. It can be made in many ways. You can make it yourself. And pizza is pizza. Food is food. Your orange is an orange. Let's just take that example, okay? The peelable ones, not the ones, not the navel. Now suppose that orange we just start to peel and eat. You think Bhagwan will like that? Peel away and eat. What about suppose you peel it and you offer it to Bhagwan and then eat it. You think you'll like that? That's bhakti. Connecting anything and everything to Bhagwan is bhakti. For example, suppose you get some new clothes or a new game that you really really like. And first, instead of wearing it yourself or playing it, you first offer it to Bhagwan, have it you, you touch it to Bhagwan's murti and then you wear the clothes and then you play the game. Then that turns into bhakti. It's kind of like magic powers, okay? So over here I have You can say, let's put this. I have a counter here, okay? This is it. Somewhere in somewhere in counter. Now, if I, instead of remembering somewhere in somewhere in somewhere, if I, if I remember other things, not chant Bhagwan's name, but if I remember other things like fast cars and uh, big houses, and I do one at a time, then this counter is just a counter, nothing else. there is no devotion here but this piece of device just by chanting bhagwan's name swaminarayan and swaminarayan and swaminarayan this piece of device actually takes you closer to bhagwan and is a form of bhakti in the same way you playing games is not wrong may it be with your friends may it be on some electronic devices doesn't matter but connecting it with bhagwan saying hey bhagwan why don't you come and play with me let's play something on a device let's race some cars let's play with your friends outside if you do that and remember bhagwan and do the same activities then it becomes bhakti but just by merely playing outside or just by uh playing on your uh you know electronic device if you don't remember bhagwan then it's not bhakti so if you want double points then you should do that okay remember bhagwan and then play moving on let's second example a journey or yatra it's a perfect example you come all the way from wisconsin okay that's a long way but you did not make a journey here remember that you came here with your family especially to have the darshan of maharaj meet santos meet bhaktos stay here enjoy the company of santos and bhaktos so instead of your journey it becomes a yatra which is something that is an indian word a gujarati word but more than that that is connected with bhagwan so it's a type of bhakti you riding in united airlines that doesn't make that plane any special but you coming for the purpose of meeting bhagwan and santos and and bhaktos that plane actually became a form of bhakti for you did you know that well, now you do next water you ever drink water a lot everyone drinks a lot of water right 
if you just go to the faucet in your house and take a glass open and open the faucet and big glass of water and start to drink it that water is water but if you offer that water to Bhagwan and then drink it it turns into prasad or charnamrut something that Bhagwan likes so anything remember just the technique is anything you do connected with Bhagwan anything you do okay if you take a shower then just don't take a shower but remember Bhagwan say Bhagwan's name and that turns into bhakti meaning you don't have to spin the mara and just do bhakti you can also do it while doing everything we'll take a little look at that in the future and singing as you can see this guy over here singing on the mic um, very loudly and you know even in the world there is the best of singers right many many singers right but you think they're performing bhakti by singing with a nice voice no but singing for Bhagwan to please Bhagwan even if your voice is horrible like mine still it's bhakti or you can say kirtan bhakti as when Puchi Guruji is darshan here so these are the types of examples all becomes bhakti when bhav is added meaning your emotion okay let's move on all right now here's a danger you know how <clears throat> There is always those two roads that go. One side over here on the left, it says selfish. And the other side, it says self, selfless. Now, there's two types of bhakti, okay? Suppose one type of bhakti is like this. You go to Bhagwan, you're like, let's make a deal, Bhagwan, okay? This is you. This is an example. I will do 50 maras if you give me a new game by next week i will perform 11 extra dunbats if you tell my dad to give me ten dollars every month you understand that's one type here's another type i will perform your bhakti whether you give me anything or not but you become happy upon me. That's one type of bhakti. I only want to perform one mara, but I want you to become happy from performing, for me performing that one mara. What do you think Bhagwan will like? Number two, right? The selfless bhakti, right? Selfish bhakti is like this. Bhagwan, please give me the best grades. I will do anything. I will perform maras done words listen to a lot of katha but just give me good grades there's nothing wrong with asking good grades but as a bribe to bhagwan that is wrong if i do this then please give me this that's wrong but if you just be like bhagwan it's your choice but i would like to please you guruji santo bhakto so if i get good grades then that would be a way to do so. If you pray like this, then Bhagwan will help you. But if you exchange that, Bhagwan, I want to, I'll do 1,000 jobs, somewhere and somewhere and somewhere, 1,000 a day, if you give me some new toys. That Bhagwan doesn't like. You understand the difference? Very good. So you got to choose wisely. Moving on. Benefits. So you know how in anything then everything you do there's a lot of benefits that you can see suppose that you came to mandir the benefits uh, the benefit is that you got the darshan of bhagwan santos bhaktos you got to do seva here at the mandir many many benefits in the same way when you do bhakti there's benefits number one positive thoughts come in positive thoughts are better than negative thoughts number two your mind becomes purified Bhakti is kind of like soap. Let's put it that way. Soap, you know, why do we use soap? Because we stink, right? No. <laughs> because our body, while during the day, has many, many germs that comes on it. Because we travel everywhere, right? But at the end of the day or in the morning when we use soap, and 
all of those bacteria and germs kind of wash away. In the same way, when we do bhakti, all the negative or bad things wash away. Soul becomes spiritually strong. Spiritually strong meaning, you know how our body, in gym, we do weightlifting, right? Or running, our body becomes very strong, right? In the same way, when we do bhakti, our soul becomes strong. It's kind of like a workout for our soul. Attaining goal. Our main goal is to attain Bhagwan and go to Akshardham. And by performing bhakti, we can go to Akshardham. And worldly pleasures vanish. You know, the whole world is pretty much disturbed by worldly pleasures and all these things like eating outside and doing crazy things. But by performing bhakti, all that washes away. So these are a lot of good benefits. Okay, when to perform bhakti? Now, you remember I talked to you about that? Now, there's many, many points here, but it says 24-7, meaning all the time. When you wake up, you first remember Bhagwan. That's a type of bhakti. When you go to sleep, you remember Bhagwan. When you do puja, obviously, you remember Bhagwan. Walking, showering, studying, eating, gaming, all the actions. Everything you do, you just connect with Bhagwan. And that's bhakti. That's all it is. Very easy. Connecting anything, anything to, of your day to Bhagwan is bhakti. Okay? Result of bhakti. Bhagwan stays within us. Now let me give you an example, okay? Suppose Bhagwan, this is an example, is a CEO of a very, very big company. Very big company, okay? Now, Bhagwan is a CEO, and you're one of his employees. You work for Bhagwan. Now, you work for Bhagwan, so he has an eye on you that you're working maybe good, maybe medium, poor, maybe a little bit, but you're still working for him. So he has an eye on you. But when you start to perform bhakti of Bhagwan, that CEO, as you're a worker, calls you into his office and says, I'm very happy with your work, Mr. Mahin. You're doing very, very well today. So I would like to give you a promotion and give you more money to work for me. You say, wow, Bhagwan, thank you so much. So what, what does that mean, Bhagwan? More money? I will stay inside of you and give you my happiness, give you my Murti's happiness. You know how Pyodagan Shamaraj is very, very beautiful, as you can see the figure here. In the same way, I will stay inside of you and I will give you my happiness. That's the benefit of bhakti, but only if you perform it. Now, this is a story I would like to tell you. As you can see here, there is this boy performing Tapni Mara. Uh, in front of Gansham Maharaj. And the story goes that this is actually Puja Guruji himself when he was not a Swami. And this place is in Surat, Rampara Mandir. And here, this is Gansham Maharaj. Now, what had happened was Guruji wanted to become a Swami from ever since a very, very small age. And he had met Dada Guruji one time and he asked Dada Guruji that I want to become a Swami please make me into a Swami now Dada Guruji is like he didn't say yes right away but you know what he said go to Gansha Maharaj here in this mandir and perform his bhakti and if Gansha Maharaj says yes you can become a Swami then I will make you into a Swami. So Guruji, for one year, performed 108 maras like this on one leg. Tapni mara, 108 maras every single day, 365 days for one year. And after one year was over, Gansha Maharaj appeared from the Murti and tapped Guruji on on the on the cheek and said that go ahead 
I give you permission to become my Swami. That is how Guruji became a Swami, was through Bhagwan's inspiration. So, but why? How did that happen? Guruji himself stood on one leg and performed 108 maras without, with pure devotion, just to please Bhagwan, without any kind of laziness, without anything, just to please Bhagwan, a pure heart. And that's why Gansha Maharaj appeared there and gave darshan and told Guruji to become a sadhu. And that's how Dada Guruji made him to a sadhu. How to develop bhakti? Now, you know, we talked about a lot of bhakti and how the nine types are, the benefits, the results, so on and so forth. But if you don't have it inside of you, how can you get it inside of you? Well, it says Satpurushno Samagam or Atma Buddhi and Bhagavad Buddhi. Satpurush is Rajipo and blessings. Satpurush meaning Guruji. Developing an affection for him. Just like how you have affection for your mom, dad, right? Your family, right? In the same way, the same exact amount. Suppose that this is you and this is how much affection you have for or love you have for your mom, dad, family, right? And suppose this is how much love you have for Bhagwan and, and Guruji. You have to get it up to here at the same level, you see? in order for bhakti to come inside of you. So just as how much you love your mom, dad, your family, you should also have the same amount of love for Guruji. When that happens, slowly, but and you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is think about the greatness of the Satpurush, how he is, how kind he is. If you've came to Yudhsibir's, remembering him when he came here, while he was giving memories, so on and so forth. By doing that, automatically bhakti will come inside of you and Bhagwan will become pleased. So that's how you do it. And it's a master key, it's an all-in-one. As we talked about, bhakti is an all-in-one and its ultimate liberation is due to bhakti. There's many kinds of, you can say, tools on the path of going to Bhagwan. Dharma, Gnan, Vairagya, Mahima, uh, so on and so forth, many, many things that you can use. But ultimate liberation or going to Akshardham in this very life can only happen if one performs the bhakti of Bhagwan. And the only way one can perform the bhakti of Bhagwan is by having bhakti for one's guru. That is a Siddhanta principle of the Vachnam, there is no doubt in that. So, bhakti is very rare, just like how a diamond, you know the Kohinoor diamond, have you heard of that? That Kohinoor diamond is a diamond which is encrusted in the queen of England's crown. And that crown is locked away in a museum in England, but the queen wore it once in her coronation ceremony, meaning making her, making her into a queen many, many years ago. And that diamond was noted to be priceless, meaning great, great scientists and great, great people could not put a price on how much the diamond was worth. One million dollars, two million dollars, one billion dollars, ten trillion dollars. No price. It was priceless. That diamond had no price because there is no diamond that can be found like that Kohinoor diamond. In the same way, bhakti is very rare. It cannot be found everywhere. Suppose we go outside of this mandir. Will we be able to find bhakti outside in PNC Bank? <laughs> or what about in the restaurants down the street? Or what about at Walgreens over there? You think so? What about in Edison? Patel Brothers? Nothing, right? You've been there today? I thought so. You can't find bhakti anywhere, but bhakti is found within the Akantik Satpurush or our Puja Guruji, 
And when he gives it to us, then we can also get that Kohinoor diamond. And we will also become like that. Performing numerous spiritual endeavors will not get you this bhakti. No matter what you do, no matter if you buy Bhagwan one million dollar new mandir, suppose you buy everything in the world, you will not be able to get bhakti. That's how rare it is. Suppose you do everything, anything you can. Suppose you get straight A's all your life, become a doctor or a lawyer, still you will not be able to attain that bhakti. Only when the Akantik Satpurush is pleased, that bhakti is attained. That's how rare it is. So saying this, this is a very, very important presentation for those who want to attain Bhagwan and those who want to attain ultimate liberation. And our Puja Guruji is an ultimate example of bhakti because in his life every step every second bhakti is infusing and oozing out of him may we see it or may we not and he is you can say the greatest example for us to look so that if we have this kind of bhakti or if we want to attain such kind of bhakti for bhagwan then the ultimate way is to attach oneself to the Ekantik Satpurush and do as he says according to the Vachnamrut to attain such kind of bhakti and go to Akshardham as an ultimate destination. Saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan.